Okay, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, great conference 2016 in Beijing. So here I'd like to talk about uh, quantum operations in conformal fuel series and its uh, holographic duals. And this work is based on Okay, so this work is based on the collaboration with Tokiro Numasawa, Kento Matanari, who is a graduate student at YITP, and Noburo Shiba, who is a postdoc in our institute. So let me begin with the introductions after this uh, great review by Juan about the entanglement and its geometry. And uh, so this purpose of my talk is to study uh, special aspects of quantum entanglement, especially uh, operational aspects of quantum entanglement in conformal fuel series so that we have some holographic duals. And uh, in my opinion, this, which, uh, this has not been so much well investigated so far. However, the quantum, in quantum information theory, this idea of this operational, I mean, definition of entanglement and so on, it's very, I mean, quite important. It's quite uh, originally formulated in that way. And so in, in this talk, we'd like to describe especially three class of operations into the especially two-dimensional conformal fuel theory, namely these three ones, some projections, so projection measurement, so we project it down to particular states, and also adding entanglement, adding some entanglement, that means some preparing some EPR pairs and particular part of the CFTs. We take a some double copy of CFTs and put some EPR pairs in locally. And finally, so we, we also discuss some swapping. So we have two CFTs, and we take a two region and swap just replace with each other and talk about time evolution. So this, by combining these three operations, we can also propose some CFT model of quantum teleportation. And we can discuss its holographic duals. So this is the uh, motivation of this uh, talk. So, so we can talk about this uh, operational aspect quantum information, so which is a very important concept. And the uh, most e famous example is a class of the operation, so-called LOCC. So LO is a local operation. And CC is a classical communication. So setup is a usual. We have some total Hilbert space is factorized into, into HA times HB and direct product. And we have a spin system, for example, for A and a spin system B. And the local operation is an operation which only acts A or B. So we, we can do some unitary transformation for A or some projection measurement or some generalization of that and only act on A or B independently. So it's, Density matrix transform this way. It's that direct product and some of possibilities like this. And uh, to, we should preserve the trace of the density matrix, so we, we need these conditions. So these are LO, and CC is a classical communication. We can just send some classical signal to the, from A to B, Alice, from Alice to Bob, and we can do some, based on the result, we can do some operation BJ. So these, are, uh, these two are combined in the called uh, LOCC. And this, for example, the one application of this is a definition of entanglement entropy. So normally we can compute entanglement entropy as a von Neumann entropy, like this. But this has uh, some operational meaning. So I'll just quickly mention here. So the uh, basic unit of entanglement is EPR pair. So we can just roughly speaking, we can count the number of EPR pairs, which we can uh, extract from the uh, given entangled system. So uh, entangled system, like this spin system, it's quite complicated. So entanglement is, happens in a very complicated way, but we can act this uh, LOCC procedure, and so that we make a very simple entanglement. Just uh, one spin is entangled the other spin in an EPR pair. So we can just, uh, by applying LOCC, we can have uh, some, just copy some number of EPR pairs between A, Aris and Bob system. And just we compute, we, we calculate the number of EPR pairs. This is essentially the coincide, the, essentially the definition of entanglement entropy in a uh, operational theory. More precisely, we should say, take some maximum number of EPR pairs which we can extract from this system and or take some copy of that. That's called some asymptotic procedure. But anyway, so roughly speaking, this entanglement entropy is defined as the maximum number of EPR pairs which we can extract from the given system. So that way, uh, op uh, quantum operation is quite important to understand quantum information theory. So that this uh, quantum operation, one highlight of this quantum operation is the famous uh, procedure called quantum teleportation. So I think many of you already heard about this before. 
So for that, we, we want to send some a state, particular state psi, which is in a B, Victor, and to Bob. So Alice and Bob share some entangled state, EPR pair. And by using this entanglement, we can actually send this information psi to Bob. So how can we do this? So this is summarized here. So we initial state is direct product state, psi state, and some EPR pair. EPR pair. And uh, this psi can be, we have some up spin and down spin, some linear combination. So we want to send this information to this ball. But uh, we can rewrite this direct product into this way. So just sum of four different states. And uh, so this psi k is written this way. These are pa very pairs, maximally entangled pairs, and four independent, four orthogonal pairs, orthogonal states. And uh, we do some measurement, project measurement between A and B, V and A. So we measure B, A, B and Alice, and uh, we choose one of them. So by projection measurement, then at the same time, this, if we start with this state, we, f we find that state is given by this small psi i, psi k. So we, one of them is realized. And uh, then, so we should understand which one, two, three, four is realized here. And it, this is just consequence of projection measurement. And we send that information by classical communication to Bob. Then we, we have these four possibilities, but uh, each possibility have, we have a particular each uh, unitary transformation which maps to just original state psi. So that, that define quantum teleportation. We can send this psi state into Bob. So the content of my talk is that, so we just finished the introduction. So we first introduce how to do local projection in conformal field theory. And uh, next we describe the quantum operation which creates some local entanglement and swapping procedure. And then we discuss holographic description of them and compute time evolutions of, for example, entanglement entropy. And finally, by combining this uh, procedure, we'd like to uh, consider some analog of quantum teleportation in conformal field theory and its holographic duals. So let me so start with the local projection. So in quantum field theory, we can consider some local projection measurement where the state at some each point in a region, particular region, it's projected. So for example, up, all spins up or down and so on. So we, each spin is projected down particular state. So this is a, we call it a local projection, local projection measurement. So that this projection operator is given by this. So each point, so we have piece, uh, point wise projection and it's just act on the other part. This complement of C, it's just act identity. Doesn't do anything. And uh, the note that after, the, after this projection, there are no real space entanglement remain in this region P. PC complements the entanglement, but region P is everything disentangled. So how can we describe in this CFT? But fortunately, there are very important class of such states with no real space entanglement, which is uh, namely given by the boundary state, so-called Cardi state. So the reason why we claim this boundary state is a no entanglement is it can be seen from this evaluation of correlation functions. So we just compute this boundary state, this put a boundary in the space time, this 2D, let's assume 2D conformal field theory and boundary state creates a boundary. And uh, so we evaluate endpoint function, but uh, just uh, so expectation value of this endpoint function in terms of boundary state with some regularization delta, delta is this with us. It's just, uh, we have some just endpoint function in a very small strip, very tiny strip. And so we can talk about some mirror of this operator, mirror charge, and then essentially, there are no two-point function contribution. Actually, essentially, it's just this contraction with the uh, mirror, this point and with mirror. So it's like factorized into one-point function, essentially. So that way, there are no two-point function. Uh, there are no correlation between these two points. So this is a, a rough uh, explanation of why this boundary state gives no uh, due to the state with no real space entanglement, we can confirm directly by computing entanglement entropy in specific examples to confirm that entropy is actually zero for, for example, free fermion system and so on. But uh, this is uh, some uh, state with translational invariance, but we can have, a, of course, more general state with no real space entanglement by acting with local unitary transformation. And this uh, claim that, so in the end, so, the claim here is that uh, local projection is actually obtained, projection to down to the real, uh, state, direct product state, is actually given by boundary state, is uh, also not, uh, first discussed by Rajapur in last year in a very interesting paper. 
And uh, so now we'd like to promote this to a um, real calculation. So we want to do some local projection measurement in 2D CFT on, on some particular interval here. And uh, we can describe this as uh, some Euclidean path integral as follows. So this is a boundary state projection, projection down to boundary state here. And we start with, some, for example, vacuum state, psi zero, and we pass the integral up to this point and project down to this boundary state. And we can put some UV regularization. So this small p is a UV regularization here, so it's Hamiltonian. So this the state realized here by this Euclidean pass integral is a state we want and a regular, regularized uh, projective state. And if we want to compute real time evolution, we can go also low range time evolution, which is a kind of orthogonal direction. And if we want to describe some density matrix, we can co put up one well, no, copy of that, blur and head state, and compute this. So an uh, actual calculation, we need to deal with this kind of geometry with two cuts. But we can, fortunately, we have a nice conformal map from this system, so two cuts to annulus. So this is an exact map, which is little in terms of some this analytical formula. And I, also, we can reformulate it in terms of theta function. But anyway, so there are some analytical formulas so we can do conform up and compute correlation function in this manifold in terms of just two-point function in annulus and so on. So the, the other uh, transformation also is helpful for later purpose. So anyway, the parameter is here. So this is a Q. So this is a Q. Sorry, I didn't. So this Q. Q is the length of this interval, and P is a regularization. So always Q divided by P. Q over P becomes an important parameter, only the parameter we have. And this is a related to the moduli of this annulus law here. It's as a function of this. So anyway, by using this, we can evaluate the entanglement entropy in free, in free Dirac fermion in CFT. So we have some just one, uh, one CFT, one copy of CFT, and we project down to this region. And we evaluate the entanglement entropy for this interval of this interval A. And we can change this position anyway. So if we do this at t equals 0, so we find this, this uh, curve of the entanglement entropy. Uh, we subtracted vacuum contribution. So we can see that near the region P here, it's really reduced. This is something we expected because after the projection down to the uh, direct product states, the entanglement entropy is reduced. And uh, because of the UV cutoff, we have some final shift here. And we can also talk about time evolution of this system. So we can just fix A to be just uh, x equals 0, just uh, sitting here, A. And then uh, just project P. and uh, talk about time evolutions, it looks like this. So it starts with a very small value because it's projected. And it's a, but after that, just after that, it grows linearly. This is a much similar to the quantum quench growth. And they saturate some finite value because the entanglement pair is just inside A and the other part. But in the end, entanglement pair is actually going away. That way, so eventually it goes to 0 and following the uh, causality. And we can also later explain some holographic calculation, but they, just here we show just holographic results, and it's also qualitatively similar. So there are two geodesic contribute, disconnected and connected, but anyway, so we initially we grow this way because of this uh, projection. After just projection, it grows at stay constant and going back, going back to zero. So, but there are some sharp phase transition phenomena which happens in the large end limit and holographic results. So now, this is a projection. So we can also talk about the uh, uh, partial entanglement, partial entangling and swapping procedure into the two different CFTs. Before, we talk about just one CFT. But now we prepare two copies of CFT, so CFT1 and CFT2. And we want to put entanglement pair between particular regions, so A1 and A2, just so we entangle these two regions locally. So for that, so actually, we can do the similar thing. We can prepare the two copy of the uh, setup which we explained before. So this is, we have two cuts here. This defines one state here. Pass integral defines state here. And the other pass integral defines also state here. But we can, to describe some, to de describe this EPR pairs, um, to create EPR pairs uh, entangling these two regions, we just attach this lower cut, lower boundary to the uh, lower boundary in the second seat. We just attach this way and upper, cut, upper boundary to upper boundary, like this way. So this defines the uh, pass integral formulation of this adding some partial entanglement. 
So it's just two copy of the what we did. So each plane with two cuts actually is conformal to the scene that as I explained. So our double geometry is a conformally becomes equal to the torus. So we have two annulus become torus and the and so then the only important parameter in CFT is the torus moduli. So it's like tau one to tau two, but tau one is sorted to zero. So tau two is very important parameter and written in terms of the ratio of this P, P and Q. Q is a, a length of this region which we project, and P is a UV regularization parameter. So that way, anyway, we find, and the, for torus, we know how to compute the entropy. So this is just given by the Cardi formula, or we can do BTZ black hole entropy, and uh, everything gives the same result. Entanglement entropy is proportional to the tau 2, this torus moduli, and uh, with central charge. It's quite a universal formula. And in our setup, so this leads to, so we, we can talk about this setup, but we take particular limit P goes to zero, because this is UV cutoff, then we can approximate the entanglement entropy to this formula. So this tau 2 becomes Q over P, it's like really extensive entropy. P is a cutoff and Q is a length of the region which we put entanglement. This is quite natural formula and it, it describes some volume law. Entanglement entropy is uh, extensive. And we can do, so because of so this picture, we can think about the other uh, growing. So we can grow this upper, upper boundary to lower boundary and then vice versa. Then what happens? So this is actually partial swapping because we, so particle uh, propagating from minus infinity to here, then just switch to the second seat and going above. So it's like swapping of these two intervals between two CFTs. And this is actually described by this uh, familiar Riemann surface. So we have two cuts geometry, and if we go around, we go to second seat and so on. And indeed, if we look carefully, so this has a different moduli, but described as torus. Torus, but different moduli, different period. And uh, so we can just use a standard uh, evaluation by using period, period of torus. And uh, in the end, so tau 2 is evaluated. But in the end, if we take particular limit P over Q, it's much smaller than 1. So this is a UV cutoff. It's very small. And Q goes, to, I mean, Q is very large. So then we find it's a so different behavior. So it's like logarithmic now. So C times log Q over P. But again, this is quite a natural formula because we start with some one interval, um, and one interval in each CFT and replace this to each other. So that essentially what we have about the entanglement is that entanglement entropy between this region, this interval, and the other part. So this is, should reduce the twice of the uh, famous formula for the Larsen Ritzler formula. So C over 3 and log L over epsilon. So indeed, Precisely we have. But uh, in this calculation, we don't need to use any twist operator and so on. It's just, and we don't need to worry about some constant term and so on. It's a particular, corresponding particular condition. So that way, so th these two procedures seem to work very well. So partial entanglement, partial swapping. So now in a we are in a position to talk about holography. So anyway, so we are, we are interested in the geometry with boundary here. We, we have two cuts and we put some boundary condition. So we need to talk about ads CFT correspondence with boundary. But this is something we uh, discussed before about the holographic dual of VCFT. So in a phenomenological approach, bottom up approach, we can actually extend this boundary towards the bulk, and towards bulk, which we call the surface queue. And uh, it should satisfy some conformal invariant condition. And it's a particular case correspond to the curvature goes to zero. So we're looking at the particular case, but we can generalize this so that we have some other value of boundary entropy, but uh, let's fix this condition. So then, then we can have some analytical, actually, calculation about everything, because we know the four conformal map between this setup to you know, just annular setup, which we know just related to the BT zebra core and so on. But anyway, so this, we are, sorry. So here, anyway, so we're putting some hole, and that is reduced to the hole in the whole bulk space time. So projection reduces the entanglement, and the, so the entanglement re reduction is equivalent to the uh, reduction of the space time volume. So, it's a, it, so intuitively, we have some hole in the holographic space time. And then, so, and then we, we can do this uh, local projection here. And then we can talk about the entanglement entropy, and essentially just given by this geodesic length, which end, uh, start with the boundary of A, but end on the boundary. And then it reproduces the formula, which also we can compute from CFT. 
So this formula. And so this is given as check. But at the same time, so we can talk about the two copies of CFTs and they do this partial entangling. So this is again, now we need to prepare two copies of the seeds with two cuts and paste with each other. So we need to paste with each other. So each copy corresponds to this kind of manifold, this kind of manifold with hole, a, with hole. And we have some two copy of this AJ space time with hole and paste with each other along the boundary of hole. So then we get to some geometry without any boundary, uh, except just asymptotic AJ boundary. So the, anyway, so we have this uh, free, uh, analytical way to find this holographic dual. So I don't write it explicitly, but uh, we have a particular metric, and it's actually essentially the coordinate transformation of the BTZ black hole because boundary is torus here. And the whole local projected case, we just cut it into half. Just we look at only half of that, that corresponds to half of the BTZ black hole. So we have some like donut shape and we just cut it into half. That gives the holographic dual. And in this case, we have two geodesic, connected geodesic and disconnected geodesic. We have to worry about the uh, phase transition. So we all, for, to the computer entanglement entropy, we should always look at the smaller value of the contribution. If, we, if there are two extreme surfaces, we should look at a smaller value. So we have the phase transition phenomena. So for this uh, projection case, so we have this red, red line. So it's really decreasing when this region A is coincides with region B. So it's uh, because of projection. On the other hand, if we do this uh, partial entanglement, adding an entanglement EPR pairs here, then it's like increases, like this way. So it's, it's, it looks sensible result. And, but we saw more interestingly, we can talk about time evolution of this setup. So we can put some, we prepare two CFTs and add an EPR pairs locally in this, along this interval and talk about time evolution. Then we measure entanglement entropy as slightly separated region, region A. And then, so initially, this EPR pair does not lead to the boundary. But uh, after time, which is roughly x1, time x1, so the EPR pair reaches here. So it contributes to the entanglement. So indeed, and if we compute entanglement entropy in a holography, it's like, it satisfies this causality condition. It's like, at some point, like x1, it increases and going up some particular value and going down. So if we take cutoff to be sharp value, then it's really a step function. This is uh, what we can expect from this relativistic propagation picture. So we can do some of this kind of thought experiment of this propagation of EPR pairs in this setup. And, uh, but especially if we take the limit, x2 goes to infinity, so that A, subsystem A, is covers the half of the space time, then EPR pair is always going <coughs> accumulated. So naively we expect something end up with a finite constant, increasing, but, but actually if we compute it, we have some logarithmic growth, like this formula. So C is a central charge and log T, roughly speaking. So why log T growth? But uh, this might suggest that there are no quasi-particle picture of this uh, propagation of uh, entanglement pairs. So this is very similar to locally excited states in holographic CFTs, but it's, if we look at the free fermion CFT or some integral CFT like minimal model, it's always end up with finite constant. But uh, here we are talking about holographic CFT, so we get some logarithmic growth, and which, is, which suggests no place particle picture. Okay, so using the rest of the time, let me go into the final part of this talk, which is a holographic construction of some quantum teleportation. So first, let me talk about the uh, quantum teleportation in conformal fuel theory. So we have some two CFTs, and uh, we have some Aris and Bob here. So they are entangled with each other. And we want to send some information. So here, we just model this by some local operator, OX. And OX is a linear combination of the uh, alpha 1, or O1, and O2, linear combination of O1 and O2. And we want to send this coefficient alpha and alpha to the second observer who are sitting here. And uh, actually for that, uh, just following this uh, quantum teleportation, we can do some local measurement, local projection measurement. Project down to, especially we are picking up some boundary states so, so that everything becomes very easy. But we particularly assume that after local measurement, we get some state psi which is given by boundary state. And then actually this, this state actually sent to the, the other side. And we can have to increase the unitary transformation to reproduce the original uh, state. So this O1 corresponds to up spin and O2 is down spin. Let's uh, interpret this way. But more precisely in the path integral formulation, this is actually become more clear. 
So, yeah, so we have some this kind of setup. This is a just a projection measurement here and projection measurement here, but actually we pass to each other because we prepare this EPR pairs between CFT1 and CFT2. We have a lot of EPR pairs, so paste with each other, and we act operator OX, and we want to send this information to the second uh, CFT, so the observer is sitting here. But actually, because we project down to particular boundary condition here, so boundary state gives some boundary condition, so it's actually reflected. We can just think this kind of Euclidean time evolution from this operator to going through this uh, pasting region and going to CFT2. So that way, we can actually send the information that way. Uh, so, and this, uh, uh, we assume this O1 and O2 is orthogonal to each other to have some linearity condition. So, and finally, so it is also interesting to think about holographic version of this. So, anyway, we are talking about partially entangled setup of two different CFT, CFT1 and CFT2. But after, anyway, coordinate transformation, it is mapped to the standard, I mean, some few double situation, or it is the holographic dual to external. Uh, sorry, eternal it is a black hole, so as a, as following this point result and some generalization of that, we can identify this holographic dual of the setup here. Original setup is a, a BTZ black hole with two boundaries. And originally, these two ADS boundaries are causally disconnected. So we cannot send the information. But after the local projection measurement, we project one of the CFT to a particular state, and especially look, focus on boundary state because of the uh, tractability. So then we put some boundary here. So this region, roughly speaking, this region is, is gone. It's a, it disappeared. So anyway, so this, if we perform some local, if we perform some projection measurement, it's holographic dual, it's a, we reduce some part of the space time. So it's a topology changes, so this part is gone. And uh, taking it into account the back reaction, actually this space should be, have this structure. So this is a Penrose diagram of this two-sided black hole, but this region is cut, and uh, actually this point should come at this point, so because this is a solution to Einstein equation. And uh, so now, original, so we inserted this op operator OX here from CFT1, but actually now going here, so it's like naturally coming to this second seat, second CFT. It's going back to the second CFT. So that way we can, observer sitting in a CFT2, originally it's a causally disconnected CFT1, but after projection measurement, I now access to this operator. So this is, uh, I mean, CFT2 somehow through the einstein rosen bridge. So there are very, uh, also stimulating discussion by then such kind of slightly different construction of this, but uh, uh, our setup gives some concrete uh, formulation in terms of some two CFTs and some operations. So here, the collapse of wave function, we do some projection measurement, we have collapse of measurement, collapse of wave function, but this also said at the same time leads to collapse of holographic space time, and so space time changes topology. And in this project, you are also this effective temperature reduced, so if we do some projection measurement, we have less entangled situations, so effective temperature also reduced by half. Okay, so let me uh, summarize conclusion of this talk. So we introduced the quantum information theoretical operations in CFTs and holographic duals, especially we talk first talk about local projection given by boundary state projection. And uh, we talk about the uh, partial entanglement. We put in a lot of uh, EPR pairs in particular part of the space time. And also we discuss the swapping of this between these two CFT only locally. So we can swap the information between the CFT. And the result of entanglement is cons uh, consistent with what we expect from other consideration, but this gives some nice, uh, maybe some laboratory for thought experiment of quantum information operation in conformal fuel cells. Also, we presented CFT and holographic model of this quantum teleportation, and projection measurement eliminates some part of space-time, and this information is teleported through einstein rosen bridge once we change this topology. And there are several future problems. One of obvious one is a higher dimensional generalization, and also a more interesting thing is that maybe we can apply this to uh, define some new quantity which measures some much part entanglement because uh, projection gives some new ingredient, not just the entanglement entropy, but also we have also projection. And indeed, if we take this linear combination, this is a projected entropy and also mutual information. So indeed, this cancels two-body entanglement and only pick up three-body kind of entanglement. So we can confirm that, for example, mutual information has a divergence when this interval to get close to each other due to two-body entanglement. But this 
linear combination don't have such a divergence. That's, uh, maybe this is quite an interesting future problem, and also explicit construction of more detailed quantum teleportation uh, manipulation will be interesting. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yes, so, so you said that if you take the thermal uh, field double state, I, I'm over here. Yeah. So if, if you take the thermal field double state and you do a local projection on one side, you remove the space time yes. on the left side. And, you, and so what does the space time look like? I mean, you have the black hole, you enter the black hole, and then you hit a singularity along some time like surface, or what? Uh, I, yeah, so. I think, it, uh, anyway, we need, once we do this projection, we have to resolve the Einstein equation and based on this boundary condition. And that gives just a single-sided AJS black hole, which is just a D2 OB hole of the double-sided black hole. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, not just uh, projected, but uh, we have to, uh, I mean, resolve the Einstein equation. This is uh, some uh, basic framework of this uh, photographic dual of the uh, boundary, co boundary conformal fuel theory. Any other questions? Okay, if not, let's thank the last evening.